how people feel when they're with you is kind of the only thing that does matter because you can go get food anywhere. Yeah. You can't get this feeling from anyone else. We are here in Dallas, Texas. We're about to go into Rye Restaurant. We're gonna be talking to one of four owners, Tanner. Super excited for this. It's gonna be a good one. This episode brought to you by Restaurant Systems Pro. With excitement, allow me to introduce to you today's guest owner and creative director of Rye Restaurant, Apothecary and Barley by Rye, Tanner Agar. Tanner, my man, are you feeling unstoppable today? Absolutely. It feels great to be here with you. So I try to live as much of my life as I possibly can and just jam in everything that I can, which means I'm tired a lot of the time, yeah. but it's a different type of tired when you've been doing something that you love, when you're with people that you love. I mean, you started cooking, from what I can understand, age 15. Yeah. You were working in the industry. At professionally. 14. Yeah, professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, 15 years later, like you said, six different countries you've worked in. You said over 32 countries you've been in. Yeah. You've learned three. I mean, that's just impressive, man. So is it just how, like, what do you think it is about you that is like this, that is making you just kind of get all this life experience so fast? I think one, you know, work was always very important to my parents. Uh, my dad moved to America so he could pursue his career. And my mom was an advertising executive for a long time. And so, you know, just the idea of I've got to work hard and I'm looking at my parents and setbacks they're facing in their career. I said, I'm going to work for myself. I'm going to set my own destiny, even though I know that this is what the cost is going to be. And it was a little harder than I anticipated uh, when, you know, you're 15. But I always wanted to define my own life and go after it because otherwise no one's going to do it for you. The more I work, the better things always seem to get for me. Mm. You know, David Chang talks about the idea of I work hard and it's the gravity that keeps me on the earth. Whereas I feel that hard work is also gravity, but to me it's more like the theory of relativity. The harder I work, the more people and opportunities find me. Yeah. Just like you were saying, you don't normally take these last minute interviews, but you found out about us and then, and here we are. Why did this happen? Because our team is doing hard work. You found about that hard work and you wanted to discuss it. And not just hard work, but good work. For sure. And I think that's a big part that really resonated with my heart. My heart. We'll get into that because that comes later in your story about how you're taking care of your employees. I also love, you have four business partners. Yeah, right? I do. And, I, and maybe there's more that I don't know about, but there's four at least public business partners. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's really interesting. We'll, we'll kind of put that on the shelf. But um, I mean, half, this, half the battle in this industry, in my opinion, is, is just doing the work and being willing to go through the obstacle, right? Well, 100%. And, yeah. you know, it was Hemingway who said, don't confuse action for progress or it's something like that. But basically, like you were saying, you still do have to do good work. And yeah. But I know the more we put in, the more I get out of it, this... This is a lifestyle, but it's given me everything in my life I love. My success really is the restaurant success, right? And the restaurant success has, in some ways, less to do with me every day. The more I do my job, the farther I come from the guests. In some ways, my ability to actually cook isn't really relevant anymore. Sure, I, I lead the creative teams and I'm in the kitchen. You saw me when we were setting up. We're working on a fermented broccoli seed uh, presentation we're doing right now. And it's interesting because I don't need to do that. What I need to do is manage the people because I've always felt that if I spend enough time worrying about my team, I won't have to worry about my guests. And those will be the people they're building the relationships with because the relationships are what matters in the business. Mm. How people feel when they're with you is kind of the only thing that does matter because you can go get food anywhere. Yeah, You can't get this feeling from anyone else. I spend more time with the people in this building than I spend with my family, mm. than I spend with my partner. I, why would I not want to be as diligent in choosing these people than I would be choosing my life partner? Yeah. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't make sense because if you don't if you don't envision a long term productive relationship with people that are in your company, they shouldn't be in your company. Why why would I spend my time? investing in people I don't see as long-term players in our organization. And food is a way that it's the only art form someone ingests. Mm. And to me, there's something really cool about someone trusting you that much with who they are, because what you eat in many ways is who you are. And to be able to share 
that with people is just a very special experience that nothing else I've ever done can compare to. I would have been so happy to be, have been offered minimum wage at a different time. And this is a better environment. You know, yeah. people, I don't, we don't have people work here for free. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, I love that the youngest generation that exists brought this industry to its knees and forced it to change. There's some, sure. I mean, I, right now we're in it, so it's so painful that we can't see it. But I think 10 years from now, when we look back at this time and the transformation that this period has is going to have long term in our industry, I think it's super, I, I don't, we're so close to we can't see it as a positive thing yet. But when we reflect back at this time, I think it's going to be a positive time because it's forcing the industry to to take care of its people and to attract people to it. I think that is going to enable different voices to finally get into the restaurant business. And we're going to see the proliferation of better concepts, more interesting things, just a more inventive and expansive food scene yeah. because more people can now be a part of it. Yeah. There are so many people whose talent is not running a business. And a lot of people don't understand that it's called the restaurant business. Mm. And if you can't figure out a way to keep yourself sustainably open, you have to close. Yeah. And that's for anyone. I mean, Noma's closing because they're saying they can't figure it out. When Tales of the Cocktail put us on the list for best new cocktail bar in America, I was so ecstatic to get to work and see all the people at Apothecary who actually made that possible. Yeah. And that was the most fun part to me. It was fun to go to Tales and celebrate with my team. And yeah, I just, I think, the lone wolf chef thing has to stop because it's not sustainable and it's lonely. And I think the media then also has to take up the mantle of understanding that these are teams because no restaurant runs in isolation. This restaurant is not good because I am a genius. I'm not actually. And a lot of people make it possible. We're sitting here. We have guests. We're full. Mm. And I have the time to sit with you because my team is great. Yeah. And that team is then what's also going to support me where I can get out a little early to catch a movie. Yeah, yeah. I can go on vacation. Yeah. And if you don't find a way to pass some of that off to the team and grow that environment, you will close. And you, just the fact that you're 30 years old, you've been in business for five years, you know, like in that you realize this, it takes a lot of people <clears throat> much longer in their career, like as an owner and just through their life to, to make that connection and, and to realize that. And I think, I think it's because of resources like this, not just this, but there's so sure. many resources out there today where people are sharing information, where, where, where we're empowering each other, you know, and it's, it's a very exciting time. The fact that you have figured this out and you've cracked that code and you're able to do what you're doing at this stage in your career is just really impressive, man. I hope you recognize we that. We have to interrupt today's video to let you know that right now, Restaurant Systems Pro is offering a no strings attached 60 day trial that will help you improve your systems increase your profit and find better work life balance all you have to do is click the link below will my place just look like the echoes of my former masters instead if i travel and i eat different types of places and different types of meals and share meals with different types of people mm. one i think that will help color me as a human being and just make me a better person and two when I will be exposed to so many things, and when I open up my place, it will be pulling from a vast experience that will help make us different mm. and unique, and that was the goal. And I recommend that to any, if you're, if you're young and healthy, the working holiday visas are pretty easy to come by. You can work in restaurants in several different countries as a result, and the, the amount you learn when you're in a new culture, especially if you don't speak the language there, just what you're forced to look at and observe. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. And you will, you'll cook differently when you yeah. come back and you'll live differently. Yeah. Uh, so if we can distill these lessons that you got, I mean, what were the biggest things? What, if you can just reflect this time, the, the things that this garnered you sure. that had the biggest influence into the man you became, the man you are today, what were, during this time, what were those biggest lessons you learned? If you can like pick up three things and drop it on us. I would say the first is a restaurant and a career doesn't have to look the way I thought it had to look. How did you think it had to look? I thought that having three Michelin stars was my destiny mm. as a kid. You know, we've got white tablecloths and everything is all 
white and it's all perfect and it's all this and I mean you can look around there's not a tablecloth we've never had a tablecloth anywhere yeah so in what way did this shift your perspective to say that it could look like this and what was that image that you wanted to pursue it was that when I thought back to the meals that were the most fun they weren't happening in those restaurants when I sat in a three Michelin star restaurant in Paris which in theory, should be the best there is, right? Yeah. And I thought, I didn't have any fun at that meal. The food was all amazing, but it wasn't any fun. And why would I want to build a restaurant where it's not any fun? I was terrified that I would build a prison for myself of a place I didn't want to be. So we designed a restaurant that we wanted to be at all the time. And that's why Rye is like that. That's why Rye is loud. That's why Rye doesn't have, we don't really have a dress code. We more have dress guidelines. We want people to be who they are and to create that connection to the guest because that's the most memorable.